Welcome to this episode of the Smart Leader Cell Podcast. I'm Jessica Lorimer, sales coach and leadership expert, and I am really excited to dig down into today's episode. Okay, poddies, I have a super special guest for you today. I'm really excited about this because having been an avid fan of their software for the last, I don't know, four years that I've run my business, I'm really, really excited to have Dave Woodward from ClickFunnels, who has a very jazzy title, Chief Revenue and Business Development Officer, I believe. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Jess. I'm excited to be here. It's a lot of fun. I'm super excited about this because ClickFunnels are, in my opinion, phenomenal. And I know there are lots of people out there who will kind of have their own feelings about, I want to build my own website and WordPress and, and do all this kind of stuff. But for me, ClickFunnels kind of came into my zone of being when I realized that I was a complete technophobe and that I can do basically nothing on WordPress. I cannot use WordPress <laughs> to save my life. And so somebody said to me, have you heard of ClickFunnels? And I was like, oh God, not another one. And they went, no, 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 it's, it's fine for you because it's drag and drop. And I was like, well, even I can do that. Of course, anyone can do that. And then, of course, I found the, you know, the sheer multitude of webinars and the amazing content. I was an immediate dot-com secrets fan and all that kind of stuff. And the software genuinely revolutionized the way that I did business. It helped push me over some key business milestones. I was able to fulfill huge launches of group programs, of book sales, of you know, even the podcast launch that we did last year. It's a phenomenal piece of kit and you get to be behind the scenes of everything. And I'm just so insanely jealous. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a ton of fun. I've never had more fun in my life doing anything. And I've, uh, I've been right. a business owner for, for years. So this is a ton of fun. I love this. And so what do you actually do all day at ClickFunnels? Because I'm, I'm imagining some like <laughs> mega office, kind of like the chocolate factory, where there are like your own version of Oompa Loompas just running around fixing software and, and doing things. How does it work? It's exactly right. There's a whole bunch of Oompa Loompas just running around that uh, take, for, fortunately, Todd and Ryan take care of all of them. <laughs> no, for us, actually, it is a ton of fun. I think we've really built our culture on making sure it's always been fun. For me, it's honestly, it's a dream come true. It's, I pinch myself every day just because I'm, I'm amazed at the acceptance of people like yourself around the world using this platform. We've got over 70,000 customers now. And it's just been a lot of fun to see not only their success, but more importantly for us, really, it's grown from just our customers now to our customers' customers' success. Mm -hmm. And it's been just fascinating to be involved in. It's been a lot of fun. And that's a huge thing, that customers to customer success, because you guys have this phenomenal business model. And, you know, every entrepreneur in the world kind of salivates when they look at ClickFunnels because they're like, oh my goodness, I want that. I want the recurring revenue stuff. I want the affiliate marketing stuff. I want the funnel stuff. But where does it start? Because you and I are both money people and, and typically you have to focus on one thing at a time and really master it before you can build up to those heights. So how long does it really take to get a ClickFunnels-esque company going? So as far as like a SaaS company like ClickFunnels? Well, no, just in, in terms of when you're building out your own funnels-based business, do you start with all the things and, and start with every funnel or... Is it just the one, master it and move on? I'm a huge believer in, in just mastering one. I think the biggest problem for most people is they see, it's the shiny object syndrome that a lot of us entrepreneurs fall into all the time. It's like, oh my gosh, it's working for, that's working for them. I'll try that. Oh, and this is working for these guys. Okay, I'll try that. Instead of just uh, picking one that works for you, your business and your product. And we talk a ton about this whole idea, the concept with you're only one funnel away. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter as far as which one that is. People joke all the time as far as, gosh, you know, ClickFunnels are just this, overnight success. I'm like, you have no idea. I mean, we, we've done ClickFunnels-esque type of businesses now. This is the fourth real attempt at launching a software company like ClickFunnels. Wow. Uh, and then when we actually launched it, it fell flat on its face for months. And it wasn't until we, Russell was speaking at Mike Vilsame's event that we realized the message and the hook and the story and the offer that was needed to then really launch ClickFunnels. And we did it all really through a webinar. So we really picked one funnel to launch ClickFunnels and it was through a webinar. Mm -hmm. And we've launched a $100 million SaaS company now based on one funnel being the webinar funnel. And then from that, we then started adding in other front end funnels, like you made mention already, Jess, as far as the doc on secrets book, the expert mm -hmm. secrets book, our perfect webinar. I mean, we have eight to 10 different front ends that we use all the time. And we kind of rotate those based on ad fatigue and different things like that. 
I love this because, you know, you mentioned there that ClickFunnels does kind of seem like an overnight success. And sometimes people see it as, oh, it's ClickFunnels. It's been there forever. And yet, they're, they're, you know, and I don't think people always realize how difficult it is to get one company doing one thing really well to consistently make money. Because as a company, what happens when you get really good is that other people copy you. And, and you guys have had competitors over the years <laughs> come up and some of them have been okay and some of them have been downright terrible. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say that any of them have been massively good yet. But how do you cope with that? Because a lot of people worry about competitors, but you guys don't seem to, you know, whether that's you're really relaxed about it or whether you're kind of like swans and you're, you know, calm above the surface, little legs <laughs> pedaling away underneath. I don't know. <laughs> There's probably a little of both of that. Um, <laughs> no, I think if it was just a software company, competition would be a huge concern of ours. Mm -hmm. For us, it's so much more than a company. We really look at it. We joke around as far as, you know, ClickFunnels being a culture type of a, a business. And it's fascinating because I, right now, in, in my role as far as ClickFunnels, I, I run all of our top line revenue business development type of things. And so I'm the guy who takes all the calls and things from the growth equity, private equity firms who are throwing money at us all the time. And it's kind of a weird thing to say no to millions and millions of dollars every time. <laughs> but it's been fascinating as as I speak to these guys and I will take every one of the calls because you learn so much from them. I mean, these guys are every single day out in the trenches dealing with SaaS companies and, and software companies around the world. But the fascinating thing to me has been what they've noticed and seen is the importance of that culture mm -hmm. and culture for them as, you know, it's not uncommon. You know, most growth equity, private equity guys, they're on the small size, it's a 30 to $40 million check. On the bigger size, it's, you know, 300 to 500 million type of stuff. There. But every single one of them, no matter who you talk to, culture is one of the biggest things they're looking at. And mm -hmm. it's not only employee culture, it's also the product culture. And yeah. if, to me, I think the, the epitome of that is Apple. I mean, Apple probably has done the, it was Apple. You either had, you had a Mac or else you had a PC. And a PC could be created by anybody around the world, but there was only one Mac. There was yeah. one, only one Apple. And as you take a look at a business, you know, what, one of the books we've been studying recently talks all about this whole idea of becoming a category king and really dominating an industry. And if you look at the way most businesses are set up, there's usually one category king that takes up, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90% of the market share and all the revenue. And then the rest, the remaining 10 to 20% is left for anybody else. And so I think as it, no matter what business you're in, if you can try to find a way of becoming the category king in that business, you will always have success. And that's why, as you may mention, as far as you guys concerned about competition, I mean, I'm always, it's my nature to always be concerned and looking, looking behind my back as far as who else is coming up. But more important than that, though, really is understanding what does it take to become a category king? How do you design a product that can do that? But more importantly, how do you support it long term? And then what is the next product that you're going to roll out then that uh, continues to establish that way? And that's really interesting because a lot of new business owners, they're not thinking about that stuff. You know, that they're constantly looking around and thinking, well, how can I beat that person's funnel, for example? Or how can I do this? Or how can I, you know, change it for the short-term gains? But what you guys have always looked at is that long-term sustainability of where are we going? How do we want to effectively outclass the market? Absolutely. And I think, you know, when you first, I mean, if you take a look, Russell, we were talking just the other day, Andrew Warner interviewed him at a big event we had in, in Provo, Utah, really about the history of ClickFunnels and, and Russell's. And it's really, if you take a look over the last 15 years, since Russell's been doing this, he's created over 150 different funnels. And a lot of times when you first get started, it's more of a product than it is a business. You create a product and you sell a product, which is how everything starts. It's, you know, you start off with a product and and sometimes that product can scale into an actual business. And other times it literally is just where you get started. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, you're cutting your teeth on learning how to do that product. I remember talking to Ryan Lebeck at an event uh, a while back where he was, I've got a 22 year old son. He was asking, my son was asking him, he said, you know, how should I get started? What do you think? And he said, you know what? You just got to find your first practice. You're going to, your first business you're going to practice on. And that's really what it is. When you first get started, it's a practice business. It's not it's not going to be what you're going to be doing the rest of your life. I mean, mm -hmm. again, we've done over 150 different funnels. Russell has in the last, you know, 12 years. Not every single one of those was his life dream goal. I mean, creating potato guns wasn't the uh, be all end all that he, you know, wanted to be known for. But it's been one of those things where he, he cut his teeth and he learned it. And I think anybody who's getting started in, in business or in a product, you have to understand that 
there's nothing wrong with getting started and learning it and cutting your teeth on it, getting better at, at understanding hooks, story offer, understand how a stack works, understanding the importance of headlines, and really just practicing on that practice business where it doesn't matter if you screw it up. It's not going to be what you're going to be known for the rest of your life. I really like this because often, you know, people can get really stuck on, oh my goodness, but everything has to be the biggest decision I've ever made because what happens in five years when I'm doing this thing and it's not what I wanted, you know, effectively it's about evolution, you know, and it effectively, you know, when you guys are putting things out there, I mean, I've watched the evolution of ClickFunnels just over the last four years. And, you know, when I started out, it was about the perfect webinar script and it was about the dot com secrets and the free book plus shipping and, and these kinds of funnels. And that's how I got in and I bought everything because I'm that kind of person. But it was so different to what we were seeing in the market. And again, consistently over time, it's become this idea of I remember when you guys put things like backpack in and you, you know, you said, okay, great. Now go and affiliate for click funnels. Now have your own affiliate area and let's make it easier for you. And it's, Every time there's a new evolution, but it feels natural. It doesn't feel forced with you guys. It's like you're taking on board the customer feedback and actually moving down a continuous path, not ever really trying to achieve, I don't know, one singular dream, but instead just looking at, okay, well, how can we consistently improve? How can we stay top of mind? No, I think that's probably for us is one of the most important parts is, as you may mention, Jess, is that customer feedback's extremely important to us. At the same time, we are the number one consumer of our own product. No one uses ClickFunnels more than we do. And we see and we feel the pain if something doesn't work right. It's like, oh my gosh, what's it going to take? How do we get this fixed? So we understand that piece of it. I think you'll see coming up here in this next year, we're going to be rolling out Actionetics MD. MD stands for multidimensional. And it's really more based on the whole idea as far as a follow-up funnel. When we first rolled out ClickFunnels, we introduced a to the world basically th such things as an order form bump and what an order form bump was and, and what is an OTO and a down sale and how do they really work inside of a funnel. And what we saw is we analyzed you know, over 300,000 different funnels was those funnels that used order form bumps and down sales and upsells had about a 540% increase on just a standard website who only sells one product. So that was where we started. And then we started taking a look at, okay, well now that you've acquired the customer, and you want to take them to the next level. That next level then is going to be based on the follow-up sequences and follow-up funnels. And what we've seen right now, as you take a look at, as we've been testing this and working with this, typically for every dollar that comes in the front-end funnel, based on the follow-up sequences, most will average somewhere between $15 to $18. We basically said the average right now is $17. So for every dollar that comes in the front-end, there's about $17 on the back-end based on the follow-up funnels. But as you consider the way the market is going, and especially the way people like to be communicated with these days, not everybody's opening just email. Mm -hmm. And so when you start taking a look at follow-up funnels, it's not just email. It's, we've got a little video we're rolling out here about Action XMD where we compare the attention span of a goldfish to the attention span of us humans. And mm -hmm. the, our attention span is six seconds and that of a goldfish is seven. And so as a marketer, you're dealing with this concept of, I would rather almost market to goldfish if they could buy money because I'd have, they have a greater attention span than most of us humans do. Because we're, we're going from page to page. And because of that, you have to take a look at communicating with them through Facebook Messenger, through desktop push notification, through text, through all sorts of different media that's out there. And so the follow-up funnels allow our customers the ability to then communicate with their prospects and clients in multiple different ways to where now you can send an email, you can send a Facebook message, or you can send a desktop push notification or a text. But more importantly, it would then, because it's all tracked to the funnel, we can then see exactly what is the ROI on that Facebook message. Mm -hmm. How much did you actually make on that email? Well, email four makes $100,000 where email three only made 10,000. What's the difference? How do we make those changes? And so for us, it's really trying to understand what is the customer's journey? And again, not only just, you know, we've been talking back and forth as far as it's our customers, but more importantly, it's our customers' customers. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that matter the most. Those are the ones who are making revenue for our customers. So we're trying to understand our customers' customers as well as they are. And the better, more time we spend in that area, the greater the products and services are to actually help our clients get a greater return on their money. And this is something that I really like because, you know, people often think that funnels are just about making money and, and just getting things on the front end. So, you know, people will quite often come to me and say, well, Jess, you know, I'm going to have to sell a hundred thousand copies of my book in order to make my revenue target. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably never going to happen. Right. <laughs> it's going to take a while. But what I like about the way that you guys do funnels is it's not about 
let's push people through as many offers in one go as possible. And you focused, and again, it comes back to that culture thing that we were talking about earlier. You guys are focused on, okay, it's one problem fixes one solution at each point in the process, whether that's a different problem or whether it's the fact that it's slightly more advanced or whatever that is. I think that's a really nice journey for for customers to be on. So how does that happen? Because a lot of companies get this really wrong, you know, and you must find this, like you guys see so many funnels from all over the place, but what does it take to really get it right? That's a great question. Practice is probably one of the biggest things. I hear people always say, you know, I get that question all the time. So what's the perfect funnel? I'm like, (laughs) it is a perfect funnel. Uh, It depends on your customer. It depends on your customer's journey. It depends on the products and services in your value ladder. What are you trying to, where are you trying to take them? How are you trying to help them? And so I think a couple of things I would make mention, Jess. One is I believe a lot of people feel like they always have to start with the lowest price point first. Mm -hmm. Uh, You just, as far as a book. Well, you'd have to sell 100,000 books to get your price point. Well, I think the problem is most people think they all have to start there. I know uh, uh, there's a company basically coined this idea as far as you know, trip wires and everybody had to start with a low, low barrier to offer type of product. I think it's a big mistake. I think actually your best thing is to start, again, I look at what we've done. We started at a price point of 1,000 bucks or a webinar. And if you can start at a much higher price point, you can spend more to acquire the customer. Each customer is worth more. And then again, same thing we've done is once you've got that and that works, you can then go the opposite direction where you can now start looking at what are other front end products that I can bring in because now you can experiment more. Now you can afford to lose a little bit of money if you need to as you're testing out those front end products. I think too often a lot of people think they have to start with the front end and they have to go through a similar type of journey they want their customers to go through. And I think it's a big mistake for a lot of people if they will actually say, you know what, here's my core product. This is the product that made, I was like, what is the greatest value that I can give a customer? And just whiteboard out exactly what would be the greatest value. Now, you may not be able to provide that right now. So what's the next step down below that? And then start with that. And, you know, maybe your greatest value is if you're a coach or consultant, it's where, gosh, they're going to, we're going to meet one-on-one and, and that's my greatest value. Well, you're not going to be able to start there. So maybe at a webinar and a group coaching type of thing would be easier to get people in. And then from there, then you can add other products or services in. But I think the main thing, when you're taking a look as far as funnels, some of the key things to pay attention to obviously is what is your hook? What is the thing that's going to separate you from everybody else? And now once you figure out your hook, what's that story and what's your offer? I mean, those are the three things. And I think for, it's probably easier to start at the offer mm-hmm. than it is to come up with a hook. You don't know where you're going. If you start at the offer, this is where I'm, this is the best thing I can offer. Then what are the stories I need to tell, tell people understand that value? And what's the hook that I need to then use to get people to hear my story? And it's again, it's about reverse engineering the process, make life easy for yourself. Absolutely. You know, I think a lot of people out there are quite scared of funnels in a way, because, you know, especially with Facebook being the way that it is. Thank you, Zuckerberg, for all of the changes. We love them. You know, it can be scary for people to think, okay. Typically with a funnel, I'm going to require a high level of traffic, which does mean I'm going to have to start using paid advertising. And, you know, some people kind of think, oh my goodness, this is going to be a black hole. I'm going to spend a ton of money. And then what will happen? How can I be guaranteed that my funnel will work? And it's, there's no guarantee. If effectively there isn't a guarantee on your funnel until you have people going through it, until you've practiced it, and until you really have reverse engineered that process to understand why somebody's coming through it in the first place and, and what they're feeling like when they get there. And I think to your point there, Jess, I think for a lot of people, they have to, we've joked around about this whole idea as far as funnel hacking. And it's really, the reason we joke around about it so much is because it really works. Yeah. And that is, you don't have to be the pioneer. You don't need to be the person who's, you know, laying face down in the dirt with arrows in your back because you're out trying to figure it all out yourself. Versus if you were to actually take a look at it and say, you know what, there's other people who have gone before me who have already had success either in your industry or in a parallel industry, one that's similar to yours or that's possibly in the same audience niche or customer niche and to find out exactly what that is and then use that. I think these days there's no reason to have to start completely from scratch. There's just too many other people have gone before you and I think it's important that you take advantage of that. Yeah, 100%. And I think as well, the one thing that I like that you guys point out is that it's about ethical funnel hacking. This is not just about let's go and rip off <laughs> this somebody else's funnel because it looks no. like successful, right? You know, you, you ultimately, you've got to do your thing in, in your industry and you can model things that are successful. I guess another question there would be then, how do you or how can you make an, 
an educated guess that somebody's funnel is working because you know again just because somebody has a photo shoot in front of the eiffel tower doesn't mean that they were necessarily super super successful <laughs> coach of the year right <laughs> i think one of the products we i wish we had an affiliate link for it uh, we've probably driven more people to this company than anybody else uh, <laughs> similar web is a company we've used quite a bit where basically you can find out exactly what traffic is working for that customer or your client or your your competitor and identify that so you basically Go to similarweb.com and you paste in the link of the website of the company that you think is, is doing well. And you're going to see all the ads that they've ran. You're going to see what's working, what's not working, how long have they ran those ads, how much they're spending on those ads. And that way you can actually even funnel hack the ad and the ad copy or the ad layout at least mm -hmm. to make sure you're getting the same type of thing. And that's probably the easiest and best way. So similarweb.com is the resource we point a lot of people to. I love that. And that's, that's exciting. And then that way, guys, you know, you can do this super ethically at the same time as making sure that you get something successful to look at in the beginning. So I guess my final question for you, and it's, it might be a fun one, is if somebody's starting out with ClickFunnels and they're looking at going, right, okay, I'm going to create a funnel. What is the most fun kind of funnel that they can build? Because ClickFunnels, you've got over 150, <laughs> like you guys are the experts. But what's the most fun one that you think, yeah, we've run that. I really enjoyed it. It was fun to launch and it made us money. Oh my gosh. There's so many different ones. That's, that's hard to even pick. I can tell you one of the most recent ones we've done was our 30 day challenge. We did 30days.com. It's closed. You can't think you can go there right now to get on a waiting list. But 30days.com, what we ended up doing was we went out to, Russell basically sent a message out to our two combo club award winners. Those people have made over a million dollars inside of a funnel. And said, listen, if you lost everything and all you had was your ClickFunnels account and your marketing know-how, what would you do? How would you start? And so we had over 30 of them literally go through a 30-day plan. Day one, I would do this. Day two, I'd do this. Day three, I would do this. And they literally went step-by-step -step through everything. And so we did it as a virtual summit. We then took that uh, the recordings, had them transcribed, put them into a 550-page book, and then offered that book. So they basically can get the book for 100 bucks, but really put them into what we refer to as our One Funnel Away Challenge which allowed them the opportunity then in the very next 30 days to do the exact same thing, to go step-by-step step and actually get success. And for us, we had, uh, I think, over 7,500 people sign up for that. And I think 5,000 people actually got started on the challenge. And, and I was just amazed. I think the reason that worked so well is because it was literally every single day we had Stephen Larson getting on. And so Russell gave the 10,000 foot level. Julie Stoyan came in and gave kind of the nuts and bolts of how to do it. And then Stephen Larson came in on it every single day for 30 minutes to an hour, just beating people up saying, here, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. And because of that, people got success. And I think the most important thing when you start taking a look at a funnel is to make sure that whoever you're selling to gets success with whatever you're, if it's a physical product, that the product works, that they receive it quickly, that it actually, they get a quick result out of it. The faster you can get someone a result, the greater your client relationship is going to be and the easier it is to take them to the very next product. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on today. Seriously, I'm absolutely obsessed by category is king and of course, get results for people faster. That's made my day. So where can people find you guys? Where can they go and get this incredible 30 day challenge thing and, you know, actually make some money using ClickFunnels? I think just probably the easiest thing is if you want to just put a link down below and that way people can just go right there and click on a link and you can send them to whichever one you want, uh, whether it's ClickFunnels or 30 dayscom or whatever else. That's probably the easiest and best thing is just to put a link down below and they can click on the link and they can use that. Okay, guys, in the show notes, I will make sure there is a link to a bunch of the different things that ClickFunnels do and my own personal pros and cons behind visiting each potential site so that you can see what I think and what would be best for you to use. Thank you so much for coming on today. Seriously, it's been an absolute pleasure. And guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you go out and you go and do the whole iTunes thing of reviewing it because it's important. It keeps iTunes happy. And most importantly, it keeps my ego going. And we like that. I will see you <laughs> in Monday's episode.